Hey guys, it's finally warming up outside and the ice cream shops are opening. So I'm bringing you a Keto Salted Caramel Ice Cream. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name's Alicia and I'm a sous chef with a sweet tooth. And here we make delicious pastries, many from my time as a pastry chef. And my goal is to make the best keto desserts possible. So if you enjoy this content, please hit the subscribe button down there. I'm coming at you every Saturday with a new keto dessert. Today, one of my favorites, ice cream. And I love my keto ice cream and it has been far too long since I have made a keto ice cream since December. That's like unheard of, but I may have cheated and went to the store a couple of times. Today, salted caramel. So this starts with a vanilla ice cream recipe, but I did do a little adjusting to the amounts of ingredients because we're adding a caramel sauce into the ice cream, which makes it sweeter and also stops it from freezing because allulose is the sugar we're using for the caramel and that doesn't freeze completely. I only have a quarter cup of allulose and two tablespoons of the golden monk fruit in here because I want a little bit of a toasty flavor from the golden monk fruit. We're just gonna add in heavy cream and I used unsweetened macadamia nut milk for this. You can also use almond milk. You can even use more heavy cream cut with maybe a little bit of water to cut down on carbs or half and half. I have one teaspoon of gelatin here and I had reserved some of my heavy cream nut mixture, nut milk mixture, <laughs> nut mixture. I'm going to bloom the gelatin in that and then I'm going to add a teaspoon of salt to my mixture. Mix this around a little bit. Put this in with our milk and heat it up. We just want the sugar to dissolve and the gelatin. This is a very simple, straightforward ice cream recipe. It's very similar to regular ice cream. It's just we're adding that gelatin in to give it a smoother texture. And we're cutting it with a little bit of the nut milk to cut down on the carbs. The only other ingredients in this are two eggs and a little bit of vanilla extract. And then we're going to get it in the fridge to cool down so that we can make our caramel. Okay, the milk mixture is just starting to steam on top. Most of the gelatin is melted. We're gonna temper our two eggs. Pour it back into your pot. At this point, you could heat it to 165 if you're worried about having raw eggs in your ice cream. I don't worry about that, so I don't reheat it. There's just more room for error there because you can scramble your eggs if you go too high. It doesn't really help make a better ice cream in the long run. It just ensures there's no raw egg. After that, you strain it back into your bowl. Any of your pesky egg whites that might have hardened in there out of your ice cream base. Definitely don't want to skip the straining. Yeah, egg whites or the chazé, the little white stringy bit that's in your eggs. And you just add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then I'm just going to place this over an ice bath to cool as quick as possible. But if you just cover the top of it with plastic wrap and put it in the fridge for eight hours, you'll be good to go in eight hours. I don't got that time. While that's chilling, we're going to make some caramel. Now this could be a little bit tricky, but I'm going to try to show you. It's hard to tell when to pull it off the heat and to add your butter and cream, but I'm going to try to get it right this time and get the exact color on camera so that you guys will know when to pull it off the heat. So I have one cup of allulose in here. I'm just going to add a little bit of water around the edge of the sugar. You don't need a lot of water. Basically what you're doing here is evaporating the water out of the sugar and browning it. Put my burner as low as possible. It's really hard to get this low here, but we're just going to let that bubble away. Sometimes give it an initial stir, but it's not really necessary. I want all the sugar kind of moistened. And once all the sugar is dissolved, I like to cook it for a couple of minutes with a lid on it just to ensure there's no crystallization of the sugar. I'm going to make two kinds of caramel with this one batch. I'm going to make like a harder caramel that we're going to make into like little chunks to put into our ice cream, a caramel sauce to put in while it's churning and to drizzle in the ice cream when we layer it in the bowl. Okay, so I just cooked it with the lid until it started boiling and it was no longer cloudy. Now it's a nice clear 
clear sugar liquid and that's what you want to make sure there's no crystallization. Now we're just gonna cook it until it's a nice amber color. Hopefully I can do it right because the first time I went too far. <laughs> And these are the molds I'm using, but you can use any molds. If you have a better little like tiny mold, maybe it would work. I got to cut these in quarters. Okay, it's starting to get amber in color. So now is when we really keep an eye on it. Took about seven and a half minutes to get here. More of a yellow than an amber right now, but it'll go quickly. And with this burner, I have it on the lowest I can get it, but on your stove top, it's going to be probably a medium low heat is what you are going to be cooking at if you want to time it. Okay, that's color I'm going with here. I think maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, it's dark amber now. So have all your stuff ready. You're gonna put in the four tablespoons of butter and one tablespoon of heavy cream. You want the butter soft. Whisk in and then one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Careful, it'll all bubble up on you. Then because we're doing a salted caramel, this is completely to taste. You can add however much you want. But I'm gonna add one teaspoon of a uh, coarse sea salt to it. Half a teaspoon. Half a teaspoon. Once it cools down a little bit, put a half cup in a very strong container, one that will not break on you when pouring. This is like 350 degrees, so do not touch this whatever you do. And then I'm gonna add in another quarter cup of heavy cream to make our caramel sauce. And then with the stuff that's in here, we're gonna put in our silicone molds. Looks like all the salt is down there, so. Might need to add a little bit more salt to this one. I just put a tiny bit in each one because I don't want them huge because I'm gonna be cutting them. I want just little balls. We might not use all these either. I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt on top. I'm gonna pop these right into the freezer and I put them right on my ice cube maker tray. Just make sure your ice cube thing is not making ice cubes. So if you have like a little mechanism, put that up so that you don't get ice cubes dropping into your caramel. Then for your caramel sauce, you just want this to be kind of room temperature to mix into your ice cream. So I'm gonna pop this into the refrigerator for a little while. We don't want it solid though. We'll be back to churn some ice cream and make some little caramel balls to add to our ice cream. Okay, my ice cream base is almost cool and these are all set. So I'm gonna pop them out. Hopefully they will stay frozen enough that I can cut them and roll them into little balls. If you watched my Easter candy video, these are the little balls that I use for the centers of our truffles. So I don't think I'm gonna need all these. And I cut mine into quarters. It might get a little bit too soft on you though. You might have to pop them back into the freezer. I made these even harder in my test batch, but when they were in the ice cream, they were a little too hard on your teeth. So I went back to making them a little bit softer. So they're gonna be a little bit more difficult to work with. It's gonna be better in your ice cream. I'm gonna pop these back in the freezer for a minute and then I'll pull them back out and roll them. I wanna try one. Soft, chewy, salty. It's gonna be great in our ice cream. This might be one of the last ice cream recipes I do for a while. Apparently there is a heavy cream shortage. Let me know down below if you've been experiencing that you can't get heavy cream, which is really sad because we use it in a lot of stuff. We went twice and they didn't have it at Walmart of all places. They don't take long in the freezer to set back up. You can make them as big or as small as you want too. Let's form them in the bowl. You can even just leave them in triangles if you want. It don't really matter. Got a little salted caramel balls. Gonna keep these in the freezer until we're ready to actually scoop out our ice cream out of our ice cream churner and into the bowl. And we're gonna layer them in there. It is time to churn some ice cream. Just took it off my ice bath. You want to make sure you don't have any water on the bottom. You can see it's like super thick now. It'll get even thicker if you let it sit for eight hours. I also have my caramel sauce standing by. It is now room temperature and it's thick, but it's still runny is what we want. This can be used just at room temperature as a caramel sauce too. Or you can use my caramel sauce recipe, which is in my hot cocoa bomb video. I'll link that up there for you if you wanna make the traditional caramel sauce. 
I just modified the caramel for my candy that I made so that we didn't have to make two separate caramels. Makes it easier on us. Pop on our ice cream maker. Make sure you get all of it in there. Now, as that's churning, pour some of your caramel sauce in there. The rest we can save for mixing in or for just on top. So we're gonna let this churn for about 20 minutes and then we'll start layering it in our bowl. Okay, our ice cream is just about done churning. I'm gonna grab our bowls and we gotta get our caramel chunks out of the freezer. Sorry if the lighting changes a lot during videos. The one light is right in front of my freezer. So I have to keep moving it and then I forget to move it back. Make sure you have something to put your paddle on so you don't waste all your ice cream. And it's only 14 grams of net carb. So if you have half cup servings, it's less than two grams because you get 10 half cup servings. It's crazy. The rest of that later. I'm gonna start by scooping some in the bottom of our bowl. Get right in there. Put some of your chocolate <laughs> your caramel chunks, not chocolate chunks. And if you want to add more of your caramel sauce, you can. Put another layer on. This will stay drizzly out on your countertop, but if you don't use it within a week, I would refrigerate it. Our stuff tends to get moldy quicker. Fridge, this does get pretty solid, but then you, you can just microwave it if you want to use it for like a caramel drizzle. Popping this one in the freezer might make more like six cups. Looks like it. So a whole cup is only two grams of net carbs. When you get down to the bottom, that's why I have a metal spoon. It's kind of stuck to the sides of the bowl and that helps. And this last guy in the freezer and then I'll be back to do some scooping and tasting of this delicious salted caramel ice cream. Can't wait. Okay, I just got back from work so it's time to scoop some ice cream. It looks good. That looks perfect. Oh, can't wait to try this. I've been snacking on my test batch and that's good, but this is gonna be amazing. Get a piece of the hard caramel. Mm. Mm. It is so yummy. It is creamy, salty, and caramel. Mm. It is the perfect balance between sweet and salty. Mm. That is so good. Now I tried my test batch over a warm fudge brownie that I had left over from my brownie battle. Oh, it was amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. Let me know what your favorite ice cream flavor is. I've done, this is number nine. So I'm up for suggestions on what the next one should be. So leave me a comment below. If you enjoy this content, please hit the subscribe button. And as always, I'll be back with many more keto dessert recipes. Bye guys.